Hey guys, this is Nene. Welcome back um, for another video on this channel. And today uh, we will have another programming tutorial on the menu. And this is pretty much the program that we will write. So, so you can see it as a kind of indicator that um, defines uh, areas where a lot of ticks happened. So you could use this as support and resistance zones or less, just like uh, trading ranges and stuff. Um, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. In this video, we will create the basis for this. So you will have this tool later on, which will show you or yeah, which will pro programmatically calculate where most ticks have happened in the last X days, candles or whatever. So you can see we can change the inputs. Let's say we want the last 10 days. And if you click on OK, yeah, it will do the same for the last 10 days and it will just take the last 10 days, the range of the last 10 days and it will have the highest, the lowest points and then it will have like 10 or whatever you code uh, different sections and every section will have the ticks in this section calculated and then you can figure out how many ticks um, of the overall ticks in these 10 days were in a specific time range. So yeah, I think this could be useful for one and another and so I decided to just make a quick tutorial so everyone can use this. So this will not be an absolute beginner tutorial. I will use things like object-oriented programming. I will use things like uh, different include classes and everything. So if you are absolutely new to MQL5 programming, you will not understand this. But then there are plenty of other tutorials on the channel or in the link um, or link in the video description. You will also find a complete course on MetaTrader 5 programming if you want to learn as quickly and as efficient as possible. So let's start now. We will open the MetaCourse language editor. And again, I will not explain the basic steps here and create a new expert advisor. We can call this uh, um, uh, tick. Um, distribution. Is this the right word? I don't know. Uh, take a visual visualization um, YouTube. Just choose any name for a program. Next, next, and finish, and create the program. Then let me quickly delete the comments and the properties because I usually do not keep this in my programs, at least not in small programs like this one. This one will only be around 100 lines of code. So it's a really small program. And then I like to rearrange my brackets like this. So let's start right away with including some files that we will then need later on. So first of all, I said we will need some arrays. So we will need array object. Then we will need um, some uh, controls in the chart or chart objects. Chart objects and we will need uh, chart object uh, text control MQH include chart objects and chart object shapes, I think, chart object shapes, MQH. So we will need this to have the visualization later on. We will need um, text controls for the labels here and uh, shapes, of course, for the rectangles that will show the colors. So then let's go to the MetaTrader again. Then we will start by creating a class and I called this C zone for the different zones that we have later on. And this will inherit from C object uh, because we want to put it in the uh, in the uh, array object array later on. So if we compile this, uh, we will see that my path are not correct. <laughs> chart objects, uh, chart object, chart objects text controls and shapes, and then the problem should be fixed. And yeah, here we will have some variables. I will just make them public, so it's easy to, is, is to work with them. And this is what I usually do for really small programs like this. And then we might have something like the tick count or the ticks or something, like a variable to count the ticks in this specific zone. And of course, every zone has a high and low. And yeah, as I tried to explain before, the zones will be always like, if we have this range, for example, and it is um, 4,000 points big, every single zone will be, for example, if you have 10 zones, every single zone will be 400 points. So this will be 400 points, for example. So every zone will have a highest and lowest point, of course, and a specific amount of ticks inside of the zone. Then we will um, want to sort the array later on where we put these zones. So we will have to override the compare method here 
or compare function of the uh, C object class. So it looks like this constant C object. Um, and then we have the other object or the node. Yeah. And then we have the mode, which is um, yeah default zero. So we'll just copy the signature here of the C object class, of course, because um, if we have a look at the wait, why isn't it opening it? Okay, it is. If we have a look at the C object class, you will find the compare function here, the virtual compare function, and we will just overwrite this. So we will have to copy the exact same signature that this function has. So the computer knows we want to overwrite this. By default, it returns zero. This will, of course, not work for um, uh, sorting, but for sorting, we will, have, uh, we will need an actual compare method. So we will have to compare two zones. So first of all, let's create another zone here, which is our other zone. And this will be the node casted to the C zone um, object pointer like this. And then we can return other uh, ticks minus ticks of the um, of the current uh, current zone. So what we have here is if we have a zone that is using the compare method and yeah, which is used to compare this zone to another zone, then we will check if the other zone has more ticks. And if so, it will mean that the uh, return value, value will be above zero or greater than one or whatever. So it means that the other zone is bigger. If it is smaller, then it will return a value smaller than zero, which means the other zone is smaller. And if it's completely the same, it will return zero. So this is usually how compare methods work in programming. Then we will need some input variables. Let's go with, we can have the time frame here if we want to work with time frames, um, period age one maybe. And then we will have the amount of candles. Candles, like let's say 100 candles. And we will see what this does in a second. Then, um, yeah, also we want to have the maybe a bus total variable. And then we want to initialize this in the on init function. So let's go with bus total. It's equal to i bus symbol time frame. And that's pretty much it. And then we can go to the on tick function. On the on the init, you can call objects delete all. If you want to delete all the objects after the program is removed from the chart, this might make sense, but of course you do not have to use this. You can also keep the shapes in the chart if you like it. So then in the on tick function, here is where the actual uh, coding happens. So what I would highly recommend is that since we're using tick data here and we have to receive the tick data um, from the terminal, you should never do this on every single tick. It's usually not necessary. So, or at least not for all the ticks. So what we want to do here is we want to get another bars variable and get uh, the current amount of bars for the time frame. And then we check if bars total is unequal bars. And yeah, if this is like this, then we say bars um, total is equal to bars. Yeah, and this will ensure that we only do whatever's written in this if statement once per bar, right? So because what we want to do here is we first of all want to get the start time of um, yeah the the ticks that we need to calculate here, and this will be i time for the current chart symbol with the time frame, and then we will have the shift, and this will be um, actually the amount of candles here. So we will go the candles back, or what we want to do is. Yeah, it, it depends. You can do this from the current candle here in this program. I started at the um, at the last day, pretty much. So I ended this at the current day and then I started uh, from the beginning of the current day and count back from this day on. So maybe this is what we will also want to do here. So let's go with the time end first, maybe. And here we can say I time symbol period D1 and then zero. This will give us the timestamp of the current um, day. And then we have the starting time, which will be um, the time end minus period seconds for our time frame, uh, time frame, and then multiplied with the candles from the candles input. So this will give us the two times. And what we can do now is we will get the ticks. So we will get the MQL ticks uh, 
structure here, or MQLTIC structure. It's a structure in VitaTrader 5 programming that looks like this. So you have different um, variables in the structure and you can fill all of this data using the copy ticks range function and this is what we will do in a second. So first of all, let's create the array here and now we, we use copy ticks range and you can see this will give for a specific symbol um, and it will store in a ticks array. So you will have to prepare this first and this is what we did here. And then we have the time range uh, or the beginning and the end. Uh, but first of all, let's say copy ticks all ticks all to just get every tick and then from MSC will be time start and end uh, to MSC will be time end. Also, it's important that if you have a look at the documentation here for the copy ticks range, you will see that um, this is the time, but uh, it's not the normal time because this is in milliseconds. And this is written here. So you will have to take the normal daytime value, which is in seconds. So time end and time start is in seconds, starting from the 1st January of 1970. And here we will have to do this in milliseconds. So multiply it with 1000 and this will give you the milliseconds. It's really, really easy. Now we just have to calculate the high and the low for these time ranges. So what we want to do here is we want to get, um, let's get the highs maybe in an array and then copy range uh, or copy highs and we'll just do the same um, that we did before here so we will say for the current symbol for the time frame and then we have the starting position or we can also use start time and start end time start and time end and we will store the values in the highest array and then to get the highest point we will just have to use highest array and get the index of array maximum of the highest array. And yeah, this should give us the highest price in this array. Now we can of course do the same thing for the lows. And here we will of course not use copy high, but copy low. The rest will stay the same, but we will store the values in the lows array. And then of course we will also get the lowest value from the lows array. So array minimum to get the lowest value from this lowest array and store it in the low variable. So what we have now is we have the lowest point of the last, um, yeah, whatever is defined here, candles, and we have the highest point, right? And we also have all the ticks in between um, of the starting and ending point. So what we want to do now is we want to get the distance or the, the, the size of the, the range and which is, of course, just high minus low. And then we want, the, want to get the actual um, uh, zones. So let's create the C array uh, object, um, which we can call zones, for example. And then we can define the amount of zones that we want to have. This is what you can change later on if you want. And here we then go um, for int i is equal to zero, i is smaller count, so we just count until we hit the count here in this for loop and then we increase the value of i after a loop um, run. And here we'll get the highest and lowest point of every single section in the total range here. So every zone will be a tenth or 10% 10 of the range. So what we have to do is we have to get from top to bottom or from bottom to top and just calculate the high and the low for every single zone. And this is what we want to do in this for loop. And it's actually really easy. We just have to say uh, the high will be high minus, and then we have the size of the range, which is here, of course, um, multiplied, with, uh, multiplied with the i and then divided by the count. This will give us the, the high of the... Uh, section that we currently are looking at and then for the low we will just go with uh, yeah actually just high minus size uh, divided by count should be should be good already I think and what you can also do is of course you can say high minus size multiplied with i plus one i plus one divided by count this should both both work. And then, yeah, let's just create the zone. So let's create a new object pointer to a new zone that we create here. So uh, zone created, and then we just have to set the zone high to H and the zone low to L. And then we add the zone to the zones array like this. So this should um, add all of the 10 zones with the high and low to the zones array that we created up here.
Then, in the next step, we will have to fill the ticks, right? So here we will just loop through the ticks array for int i is equal to 0, i is smaller, array size, uh, ticks array, and i++. plus plus. And now we are looking at every single tick and we are checking which zone this tick should be filled in, right? So what we can do is we can just loop through the zones here for int uh, j is equal to zero, 0, j is smaller than zones total, uh, j++. Plus plus. So we will just loop through the zones and then we are checking if this tick that we are currently looking on ticks uh, at i bit is, oh, first of all, we have to get the zone here, of course, C zone, uh, or the object pointer, zone is equal to zones at uh, J. And then we are checking if this bit price of the tick that we are currently looking at is inside of this zone. And this is really easy. We just check if the bit is um, greater or equal to zone low. And if this tick is great uh, is smaller or equal than zone high and this means it is inside of this zone and then uh, yeah we we'll just increase the zone ticks by one and we break outside of this inner loop because we now found the uh, the zone where the ticks belong to and then we can go on with the next tick so yeah so this is um the part of code that we need to get the range, get the different zones, store the zones in an array, and then add the ticks into the specific zone where it belongs to. So now what we have to do is fix this error first. Oh, we don't want to add the zones, but we want to add the zone, of course, to the zones array. So now we will have to take care of the visualization, right? So here we will so, uh, sort the zones. Actually, I don't really know why I did this when I created the program. I think it's not really uh, needed if you just want to visualize the zones. But I mean, it's still cool. So you have uh, like a, a, a sorted zones array for later processing maybe. So you can easily access the, the largest zone and the smallest zone by just using the indexes in the zones array. But yeah, let's just loop through the zones now int uh, i is equal to zero, <clears throat> i is smaller than uh, zones total, and then afterwards, of course, increase i by one. So we're just looping through, through the zones again here. Then let's get every single zone. Um, it's zones at i, and then we will create a object name, which will be zone, for example, Plus, uh, plus integer to string i maybe so just to make every every object name unique, and then we will create c chart object uh, rectangle, a new rectangle, uh, rectangle like this. And we want to call the create function of this rectangle uh, object and yeah, just drop this object on the chart with the chart ID 0, with the object name, with the, in the chart window 0, sub window, and then we have the time price, time 2, price 2. So it will be the time start, of course, then we have a zone high, then we have time end, and we have a zone uh, low. This will draw the rectangle and then we can go ahead and say, rectangle fill true. This means that the rectangle will be filled, filled with a color. So if we compile this, we should now be able to see something in the screen, on the screen for the first time. So compile, and if you do not have any errors, go to the MidiTrader 5. Let me delete this program from the chart now. And let's call the program that we just created. And it's Tick Visualization YouTube for me, or whatever name you chose. So let's go with uh, the last, yeah, maybe 20 hours would be enough, right? Uh, and click on OK, and we should hopefully see something in the chart uh, with the next tick. Uh, we don't really. Was there a tick already? And yeah, we can also add the on tick function call to the on init function, so we can make sure that uh, it's called directly when the program is activated. This maybe makes sense. 
And yeah, we see there is no range displayed, so I will have to fix something here probably. Uh, yeah, so I found the problem and I think it was not really with the code, but um, yeah, we will have to delete, uh, wait, this line of course in the on init function. The bus total should not be initialized, or you could do this, but then uh, the, the code in the on tick will of course only be processed with the next bar. So if we just delete this line, and we should now see it directly when we when we when we um, activate the the program on the chart. And now we should see that. Yeah, let me remove this again. Um, if we activate the the program, it will print the range. There it is. And uh, yeah, then I also realized this realized that we will have the um, undeleted objects here if we remove the program from the chart. It's not like really a problem but yeah we will of course uh, fix this and it's easily fixed we can just create another um, variable for this here c array object um, and we call this chart objects maybe objects and then we can just in the on dnet function for example say chart objects uh, delete or clear so we'll just clear everything here Oh, no, we, do, we don't even have to do this since this is uh, taking care of this automatically. So if we just put the chart objects that we created here in this chart objects array, this should uh, take care of this. So we put it inside of the array and it makes sense maybe to clear the chart objects array before we add new stuff into it. So if we compile it like this, now we should not see the leaks anymore if we just remove the program from the chart. And yeah, this is taking care of the memory management in the background. And then we can, um, of course, also create the uh, object label now. So C chart object label, uh, label new C chart object label like this. And then we want to say label create label create come on give me the preview here there it is um, symbol name should be object name maybe plus label <laughs> then we have the sub window zero the time will be uh, time start and the price could be zone high and then it is important so it doesn't look awkward you will have to say um, label or we can set the label color to color whatever you want to use, white for example, and then we can say label a description, and here you want to add the text now. Um, and here we will say, um, yeah, it's double to string, and then we have the ticks here, so zone ticks, ticks divided by array size ticks multiplied with 100. This will give us the percentage calculation of how many ticks of the overall ticks are in this specific zone that we are looking at, right? And then we want to add the like percent sign so everything looks beautiful on the chart. So if we compile the program like this, it will actually, oh, there are some errors that I should take care of. Uh, double to string, double blah blah blah. Oh, I have to close this bracket here, of course, for the uh, double to string function. But if we do this and go back to our program, we can see that now, uh, yeah, it should show all the relevant information. And uh, wait, is it also working if we switch time frames? Not really, because we are, yeah. In this case, to make it also work, if we switch time frames, I think um, we have we, we can say if reason is equal to reason remove. In this case, we want to leave the objects, otherwise the objects can stay in place. And then uh, it should also, yeah, like not delete the objects if we change uh, the time frame, right? Um, okay, and this will take care of, uh, oh, wait, why are we leaking? Um, Oh, I think this is only if we recompile, but not if we remove it from the chart in a normal way. Yeah, this is not really important. This is just for memory management. Um, 
if you are working on the program itself, but it's not really important for the later use case when you want to use it in the actual uh, trading scenario, I think. But you can, of course, still handle this if you, are, if you don't want to see this uh, memory leak in the uh, journal. But yeah, so now, now the last thing that I want to do is um, to change the color of the, uh, le uh, the, the rectangle. So what we want to do here is we want to say if zone ticks, so the zone that we're currently looking at is greater than array size uh, ticks, like the overall ticks array, multiplied with, let's say, 0 0.15. And in this case, we want to say rectangle color should be... Uh, color should be color orange red for example and then we can say else if zone ticks greater than array size so you can just choose the coloring scheme that you like to see multiplied with 0 0.112 and you can choose any numbers of course you could also say 0.10 and then just change the color to the color that you want to see here uh, color uh, tomato is <laughs> the one that I chose and then uh, yeah, you can, of course, use as many different colors as you like. So just make sure to yeah, add more colors if you want or less colors and uh, yeah, whatever you feel like is, is suitable for you. And then we can say color, color, sandy brown is what I chose for my actual program. And else, if you do not find that this zone fits any of these criteria, we will have to set a default color. And we can say color should be color uh, light gray, for example. So if we compile this now, this should make sure that, oh, wait, this has to be a uh, uppercase letter, of course. And then this should uh, take care of the coloring scheme here. So now you can see uh, actually like where the most ticks happened. And it's usually, of course, where also the bars are, right? There you will see a colored um uh, colored uh, rectangle and I'm wondering why my um, labels here are not white I think labeled color is color right uh, color white should be white I'm not really sure why this is not white color for the for the rectangles here uh, for the labels sorry um, yeah this is weird looks like um, the color changes when the rectangle changes its color white. Right? So if we go and set the color of the label down here, will it now be white? I don't really know why, but no, I don't know. Ah, okay, I think I know, because we didn't add the chart object, uh, the label here to our chart objects array. And this is probably why it's reset to a default color. I don't know. But yeah, like this. Um, if we... Yeah, if we compile it like this, we can now see the color of the label is now white. But of course, you can choose any color. If you like prefer the black one, you can of course also go with the black. Or you can also say uh, you want to have it written in a yellow because you can read it better. So whatever is suitable for you. So you can see with these C chart object classes, uh, it's really easy and convenient to work with the chart objects. And yeah, this is uh, the program that I wrote um, some days ago and I just wanted to share with you. You can, of course, change the inputs and um, yeah, we still have to work on this a little bit like for example here you will also have to say for example if reason is uh, equal reason um, uh, parameters so it will be redrawn if you change the parameters so for example if I uh, change the parameters now it should redraw everything and um, oh and then we also want to say here, yeah, I mean, you can see there are still some changes that you would have to do um, if you want to, um, if you really want to use this, or, or you can modify this so it fits your needs um, directly. So this is just a, a idea that I wanted to share. It's not a finished program, of course. You will like if you want to make a a working expert advisor or training strategy out of this you will have to add some more code but yeah you can see it's really cool you can play around with this you can say of course also you want to have like 15 minute charts 
uh, to calculate and then you will have the 50 minute bars here and they will give you the um, the, the support and resistance zones or just the sideways zones, like whatever you want to use this for, I'm fine with it. Uh, and I hope that you like this little explanation. Uh, yeah, again, I know I was going a little bit fast in this tutorial, but as I said in the beginning, it's not a beginner's tutorial, so you should know about object-oriented programming and stuff if you're watching this. And um, if not, you can uh, just check out the link in the video description for the complete course. So that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great time. Bye.